I also have a concern about civilian casualties. I was able to tell you within <coughs> one or two units what the Canadian fatality has been. I wish I could tell you what the Afghan fatalities have been as well. Um, according to Mark um, Herold, between the invasion in 2006, somewhere between 15 and 18,000 Afghans lost their lives. I suspect that is a radical understatement, but that's the best he could do to gather the statistics. In 2006 alone, 4,500 <coughs> Afghanis, according to him, lost their lives. But the problem is the American military, for sure, don't bother to count civilian statistics, and they don't do that in Iraq, and they don't do that in Afghanistan, and those of us who are not military personnel are sometimes tempted to think that's because they really discount the importance of the people that they kill. It's only their own soldiers who are worthy of recollection like that. So civilian casualties is a growing problem, and of course it's one of the major reasons why the insurgency and the resistance has become so strong and that the hatred of the occupation forces has become so accelerated um, over, the, over the past couple of years. So they, we know that some civilian casualties have been caused um, by collective punishment, that in 2006 the, the village of Chachal, I think it was called, um, there was an aerial, U.S. aerial strike which uh, accordingly, it probably killed over a hundred people, and the Guardian newspaper records that two days earlier, a Chinook uh, army helicopter had been shot down just two kilometers from the village. So it's pretty clear that that's a documented case of collective punishment, which of course is prohibited under the United Nations Charter. So Peggy is telling me to to move on here. So I don't know what else. I, I have some other concerns about the the general. Uh, state of famine and starvation in, um, in Afghanistan. I have concerns about the poppy crop eradication. The Americans are using a strategy that they've used in Colombia with disastrous effects, which was there was called the Andean Initiative. And this is the eradication of a poppy crop, which for large numbers of people in the south of Afghanistan is the only cash crop they have. The Americans have refused to talk about licensing poppies for producing medical pharmaceuticals. And this is something which is done in Turkey and Thailand. And the American government, the, the, the Drug um, Administration, Enforcement Administration, has concluded agreements with Turkey and with Thailand specifically to grow poppies for um, pharmaceutical reasons. Turkey is no longer the number one supplier of heroin for that reason, uh, illegal heroin. But they don't, Americans are not open to that discussion in Afghanistan. And this has become a big division because many of the NATO countries supporting the coalition uh, are very much opposed to the American policies of crop eradication. And the good news, the bad news, of course, is the Americans are just about to begin a spraying program. A spraying program with all of the environmental toxins that that will probably so I could talk a lot more about uh, the, the failure of Canadian humanitarian aid it has to do with the, the whole problem of organizing ourselves within provincial reconstruction teams. A provincial reconstruction team is the American US Army's version of counterinsurgency warfare. It's the soft side of counterinsurgency warfare. Um, but as Oxfam and the Doctors Without Borders and many other NGOs have shown that trying to extend humanitarian aid and reconstruction um, through a military unit is putting everybody at risk. It's certainly putting the recipients of that at risk because the resistance will see them as collaborators. It's putting the NGO uh, workers at risk um, and frequently the army will use its ability to monopolize humanitarian aid to extract intelligence from villages and in other ways to try and coerce uh, and bring people into uh, 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 and use them for military purposes. So, okay, 